Julie Gunlock. Julie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. A billion dollars uh, being wasted now because school kids are just throw rejecting the food, throwing it away. We find that in Boston, 40% of all lunches served, uh, the kids are throwing it away. In Los Angeles, uh, right up the road from us, LA alone, $18 billion worth of school food is just thrown away uh, by these kids. What, so what happened here? I mean, I, I understand trying to get rid of junk food or at least curb it, but what went wrong? Well, part of it is that, you know, a lot of schools uh, locally want to ban certain products. Unfortunately, we should be allowing the locals to do this. This was a federal mandate that comes down from Washington telling uh, schools what they can and cannot serve. We should put the responsibility in the, in, in the, in the locals' hands. Um, and you're right about the food waste. In some schools, the food waste was so bad that local schools actually made arrangements with homeless shelters uh, so that the food could be shipped over there oh, because the kids simply weren't eating it. I I like your idea. Let's let's localize it. I mean, if if if, right. if not the state level, then then certainly the the uh, the county level or the, or the local school district. Yeah. I mean, what what uh, what works in Denver, Colorado, may not work well in the Bronx. Right. Right, and, and it, it really it suggests that only the federal only federal government officials care about kids. There are a lot of local officials. I mean, there are are women who work every day, women and men who work every day in these schools. They obviously care about kids, and then the federal government comes down and says, "You're not smart enough. You're not good enough to come up with uh, good meals for these kids. We need to develop national rules." I mean, and there actually are at the USDA. There are lists of what uh, can be served in certain in, in schools. This is absurd. We need to return control to the locals. Look, if local schools want to ban certain junk foods or certain snack foods or sodas, that's fine, but it shouldn't be a federal rule. It makes it very, very hard for these schools to, to, to cater to the certain tastes of certain areas. I mean, kids in California might like things differently from kids in Maine, and we should be giving the local officials and the local cooks in the kitchen, for goodness sake, the ability to change food and to make food more palatable to regional kids. You know, it, and it reminds me of Common Core, actually, uh, where you're trying to federalize the curriculum. Absolutely. Yeah, you agree with that? That's absolutely right. Um, I, so that's, that's a great analogy. Go ahead. I'm just saying that's a great analogy. I mean, look, you know, you have the, uh, you have, you take control away from the teachers, you take away control from the lunch ladies, you take away control from the, from, from, um, you know, school administrators. Again, it's all these federal rules coming down. Nobody disagrees with maybe banning sodas and, and other snack foods in schools. I mean, I understand that some kids really, when they're studying after school or if a kid is involved in sports, they might want to go to a vending machine and get something that's good. But the local schools know the kids the best. The kids, the people working in the schools know the kids the best. They should be making those decisions. Now, Julie, other than uh, organizations like yours at the Independent Women's Forum, and you're, and you're a director of an organization called the uh, Culture of uh, Alarmism Project, are there any voices out there trying to stem the tide here, trying to take the power away from the federal government back to the local decision on this whole food issue? Well, actually, there's some really good sources, and I, I'd like to also say that, you know, we complain about school lunches, kids are complaining about school lunches. One of the concerns that we have and that I've written about is the fact that you, you ban things, snack foods, in schools, you make the, the school lunches so unpalatable, it just drives kids to the convenience stores. Kids mm. will just buy their bag of Doritos or their soda, they'll starve all day. We, we, a million kids have dropped out of the school lunch program. And, and so they're just driving them to these con convenience stores. So ultimately, we've done nothing to improve the health and, uh, and nutrition of these kids. What we need to really encourage, and what I wish we'd hear more from the administration, is getting back to packing kids a lunch. Parents ultimately know what their kids need from a medical standpoint to a nutrition standpoint. They should be taking control. There is no reason for people with the means to be relying and paying full price for a school lunch. Get that Spider-Man lunchbox out. Julie Gunlock, thank you for joining us on this, <laughs> on this topic on the first day of school for many students.